Make sure you guys lock your doors. Hey, this is Next Meridian. We are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender, Albatros. Three years, seven continents, 88 countries and just the road as a home. In this episode, we continue traveling with Nicole's family through the south of Mexico, all the way from the Pacific coast to the Caribbean. There is a bit of nostalgia to leave the Pacific coast, but we know it is only momentary. Us with the Defender and next family with a mini tiny Chevrolet rented in Oaxaca. On the menu, Mayan pyramids, tropical forests, random beautiful encounters and our first challenge on the road. Let's go! So we are in the city of San Pedro. We're really not in the most touristic areas. So yesterday we had a super fun night. We ended up by chance and because Philip looked it up in like a restaurant, we couldn't even find the entry door. There was only people from the city. It was so nice, so fun. We had an amazing night. Sit down, sit down, please. Go on, Filippo. And then this morning we're going to pack up and go. First, I went to get bread at the Macau Central in front. And now I'm going to get the jam and everything so that we can have a breakfast with the family. Slowly, we make our way to the Chiapas. Chiapas is not any Mexican province. It has key particularities, including the fact that it is the largest indigenous population with 10 recognized groups, 56 languages, a million people speaking an indigenous language and 300,000 people who actually don't even speak Spanish. Most of them are descendants of the Maya, while the rest of the country strongly identifies as mestizos, mixed race between European and indigenous background, in Chiapas, the majority of the population strongly identifies with an indigenous identity. And the heart of all this culture lies in the region of San Cristobal de las Casas. This is where we arrived that night. First impression of San Cristobal de las Casas, it's beautiful. One word, beautiful. ¿Te gusta San Cristobal de las Casas? Sí, me gusta mucho San Cristobal de la Casa. It's really green, lots of nice buildings, like this church is really nice. And um, all the little streets are very tight, narrow. And on top of it, all the roofs are very low, so it, you can see very far and it just feels very cozy. I really like it. Hey mom, what was it that you told me about San Cristobal? I remember a few things from about San Cristobal uh, from some years ago. And uh, I remember that as a young person, I, San Cristobal was in the news because it was the center where the movement of the Zapatista started. And uh, in 1994, if I remember correctly, I don't know much, but uh, it was one of those movements uh, to put the accent and, and give really a lot of um, interest to the people who have been vulnerable, who have been discriminated against and I think because of poverty and I think there was a movement by which they even marched from uh, 
from San Cristobal up to the capital and they were all organized uh, in, in a way to bring attention to all what the problems were. Do you remember yes. you were saying uh, earlier that you were reading from your book that sometime in 2003 uh, the doors opened up in Chiapas to external populations? Yeah, well, they had a lot of, that's what I understood, okay, yeah. a lot of experts. So, um, there were a lot of conflicts here for in the 90s, yeah. but the, the Indians in the uh, surrounding villages wanted to get independence. And finally, in the early 2000s, they got uh, what they wanted, to mean that they can run their own villages and areas independently. Yeah. And that means that uh, this San Cristobal could um, finally opened up. It was uh, a safe area. There were no conflicts around the town. The access was, uh, was open. Look at this bucket full of crickets. Wow, look at that. Crazy. I feel it's never not eating. I'm very hungry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's also delicious. It's good? We've got lemon, and I never had it with chili before under. I guess it's our usual combination. San Cristobal is awesome, but it's true, it opened to tourism and some of the places in the city are quite busy. But if you want a tip to get out of those touristic areas, we encourage you to go to the Mercado, the marketplace. This is probably our favorite spot in the entire city. Medium shrimp, medium big shrimp, and a big shrimp. The market is incredible. So there's the meat section, the fish section, and then in between there's those mini kitchens with like maybe one lady or two persons, and then they have one table and one person in, uh, eating in front. Uh, the smells are very strong, but it looks it looks really cool. in the candle section and I have to say it smells much better than at the lower level with the meat and the fish and it's nice in this one there's only banana and movie only banana and movie and if you really want more non-touristic place this is the exclusive next meridian expedition tip you can also go oil changing on a random parking you can be sure there will be no other tourists next to you. All right, few little things. First thing, a bucket. Second thing, fill. Here, catch it. Nice. We got Dan the man, you ready? <laughs> it's perfect, dude. Cool. Do you remember everything we did? Uh, yeah. Go oil change, it. transmission. Yeah. We put some clutch. No, we didn't. Yeah, we put some clutch oil. In. Yep. Uh, and then we, well, we took out the oil, put, put the new one in. Yep. That was it, no? Checked the coolant liquid and we coolant added some. Liquid. And we did the four transmissions. Yeah. And we changed the fuel filter. Yeah. And we changed the air filter. And we changed it all, <laughs> in, all in one hour and a half. Exactly. Good job, man. Good Thanks, effort. dude. Did you like it? I enjoyed it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot, Phil. You're yeah. hired whenever you want around the world to be our mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> Hello.
Morning. <laughs> Enjoying a little breakfast. Nice. Pan de chocolat. Sweet. Mm. Chocolatino. Mm. That morning, we head only a few kilometers away in a neighbor town called San Juan de Chamula or Chamula. The city is not like any town. It is considered the heart of indigenous culture and everyone there, literally everyone, speaks in the indigenous language. Tzotzil. We are in the village of Chamula today and it's uh, Epifania. So there's a procession around the beautiful church of uh, Chamula. Uh, it's very busy, it's in front of the marketplace. So let's go check it out. But the decorations on the church are beautiful. Because it is an autonomous city ruled by Tzotzil administration, represented by those men you can see on those images, Chamula has its own police force. Taking picture in the church could lead visitors to be expelled from the village. We just came out of the uh, church. Uh, it was forbidden to film inside, so it was very, very impressive because we had like full scale the mix between uh, traditional practices and uh, Catholic religion. Um, inside the church, they had pool, like there was no no seat, nothing. There was just like tables and icons of each of the saints on the side, and then there was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of candles on those tables. Um, and in the middle, on the floor, people were doing ceremonies that looked more like pagan ceremonies than Catholic ceremonies, uh, bringing uh, chickens, bringing offerings. Um, and then there was like a group of musicians that were like constantly repeating the same rhythm. It was very, very beautiful with a number of different instruments. And in the very back, it seems like there was some priests and a lot of people, and again, more music and some people uh, dancing. It was very special, uh, we were lucky, we randomly ended up on that procession on that day. And right out of the church, I might have lacked the words to explain the scene correctly. The Catholic saints icons I saw next to the walls represented Mayan gods. The local form of Catholicism is a blend of pre-conquest Maya customs and Spanish Catholic tradition. In this tradition, curanderos, medicine men, prescribe remedies such as candles of specific colors and sizes, specific flower petals or feathers, or, in a dear situation, a live chicken. The specified remedies are brought to her healing ceremony in the church, and Chamula families kneel on the floor of the church with the prescribed items, stick candles on the floor, drink ceremonial cups of posh, a Mayan liquor, and chant prayers in Tzotzil language. But as in many places, this cultural exception comes at a cost. The marginalization cost. As mentioned earlier, Chiapas is the poorest province of Mexico, and the daily life hardship is visible on the side of the road. And at one occasion, and I insist, it was only one occasion, we ran into a challenge on the road. Make sure you guys lock your doors. No, no, 
Vamos. Vamos a ir. Se puede. Se puede. Se puede. Yo tengo a ir. Tengo Pero ayer. si es otro día, pues. No. Que son 10 días, estamos en la carretera. No, no, no. no. Vamos a quedar a unos media hora aquí. Sí, sí, nos quedamos. Está bien, nos vamos a bloquear a todos. No, 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 quedamos aquí. So earlier today we met some Mexican tourists uh, so they were traveling through the area but they're not from here and they warned us that on this road we would may end up in situations on the road where locals put a rope and they ask for money to get the road rope down and we had not seen it up until here exactly here uh, where for the first time we actually saw the rope so we stayed our line we said no we're not paying we're not paying we're not paying and eventually they lowered the rope for a car that was in front and nick went for it uh, now we're going to did see. you guys make it through <coughs> Hey, did you guys make it through? Yeah, we did, yeah. Is that you behind me? We are behind you, we didn't pay, and we are here so we can go and get up. Cool, so what did you guys do to get through? Uh, we passed when the bus on the other side also passed, but what we told them is that we are tourists and we don't know the problems of government and it was upsetting to see that system, but uh, you know I can understand why it's there because they gotta do what they gotta do to try and get you know what they need for their families. But it is a bit disturbing, especially when you're a tourist because you don't know how to react. Eventually, we came out of that situation pretty easily. We refused to pay, advised by other Mexican tourists to support the idea that if we pay, we will encourage more roadblocks along the way. That was the only time in six weeks of overlands in Mexico we faced a situation like this one. But something struck me on those remote roads. No matter how far we would drive, it looked like a famous brand of soda had made sure everyone knew it came first. How crazy is that? Our route brought us to quieter lands, in a place that did not even have this famous soda brand. And for a good reason. This place has been abandoned by its inhabitants the Mayans centuries ago. Welcome to the Tonina archaeological site. The particularity of the Tonino site, Tonina site is um, it's the biggest pyramid in Mesoamerica, about 75 meters high. Um, it was, the site was funded between the 3rd and 5th century and then came up and down uh, with the wars, the different wars uh, in the Maya world until I think the 15th century where it was abandoned entirely and rediscovered in the 20th century. So it's quite nice for now there's about no one else than just the five of us uh, and we're looking forward looking at the view from up there because it looks super super high. Let's go check it. I'm going to film your reaction. Whoa. C'est cool, huh? That that is wow. <laughs> That's hard and the uh... Uh, Templo del Sol. It's more than 65 meters, this? 75, it is. Wow. That's fantastic. Wow. This is a body. 
More stairs, more stairs, more stairs. Always more stairs. Up, up. <laughs> what is the most fascinating about this place is probably the fact that we can we can actually go around and there's almost no one. Even from some of the lower level, you understand quite fast why it was a strategic military post. You're really seeing everything around. <laughs> what are you two doing? You're, you're being sacrificed. You're being sacrificed. <laughs> So there's us traveling the world to see places like this and there's those guys with their little farm facing the pyramid. Awesome! Oop. We visited other sites like Palenque but only show you Tonina because it was the one we preferred and we were alone in that one which was a treat. A grill, grill, and fish, and garlic, very good. <laughs> fish, garlic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. We will find it. Thank you. See you soon, my friend. <laughs> See you soon, my friend. <laughs> so, like Nick and Phil were talking on the radio, and we're on the same channel. Then some people with restaurants are in here, and. The guys were like, oh yeah, we should eat, we're starving. And then the next thing we hear on the radio is like, very good fish, very, very, very good fish, fried fish, garlic fish. Yeah. <laughs> As we exit Chiapas, we lower in elevation and the road straightens. From Oaxaca to Quintana Roo on the Yucatan Peninsula, our little convoy, and in particular the tiny little Chevrolet rented by Nicholas' family, have covered more than 2,000 kilometers. And just two days before the end of this trip, I thought it would be the perfect moment to debrief with our closed ones this road trip through Mexico. Two questions for them. Did anything come as a surprise during this journey? And what was their favorite location? Well, I read all these horror stories about driving uh, in Chiapas and, and the roads being completely um, out of whack and all that. But it was very smooth, very apart smooth. from the topes. And your, <laughs> and your favorite parts of the trip? Uh, my favorite were, was the um, church at the uh, Chambula. Inside the church, they were killing chickens in the middle of the of the church and doing all these rituals so it was fantastic it was full of smoke everywhere awesome yes. thank you pat ali most surprising and favorite place most surprising that everyone is so helpful i thought that there would be a sort of um enclaves of um gentle people and then all around a very very tough environment is exactly the contrary everyone is ready to help and it's uh, harmonious beautiful trees beautiful nature and then everything is peaceful and relaxing so and a variety that i really love you can move from uh, the best architecture in uh, Mexico City to the most sophisticated uh, places in Oaxaca and to pure nature in Chiapas. I love driving through for days through the forest. Nice. Thank you, Ale. Thank you. Bill. What, what, was, the, what was the question? Was... Um, most surprising or like something you found intriguing about Mexico that you didn't know and favorite place? Yeah, I think probably like safety was did a lot of stuff that we didn't really have to worry too much about. We ended up in some 
very local restaurants in some small village. I remember San Pedro, no. And then, yeah, San Pedro at this nice restaurant. And then they invited us for drinks and we were chatting. It was fun. And then, uh, the one that I like the most, was that the other place? Yeah, like one of the places you've enjoyed the most. Mm, I really like the beach on the west coast. And that little village we were staying at. I can't remember the name. Puerto Angel. Puerto Angel. Super local. And then uh, surfing with Nick for like six hours. It was nice. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. That was the honest review from people who drove 2,000 kilometers in a tiny car through Mexico. After that, you can decide whether or not you are ready to drive in Mexico yourself. After this long road, nothing better than just crossing the jungle to relax next to the Bacalal Laguna. There's a snake right here. It looks like a rope from far. Oh my god! Is it warm? Yeah, it's super warm. Nice. And the last two days of Nicolas' family in the country were supposed to be as relaxing as this time next to Bacala Laguna. But an unfortunate event is going to change the course of our journey. So the issue is... Um in a wheelchair at the hospital. <laughs> next week we show you everything that happened and what we decided to do. Until next Saturday, take care!